Hello and welcome to Startup to Scale Up. I'm Avni Raja. And in this episode, we're putting the spotlight on smarter logistics. First, take a look. Smarter Logistics, a startup that's at the forefront of India's logistics revolution. With its focus on speed and reliability, this tech-driven firm has achieved almost half the delivery time versus the industry average. Also, in a span of two years, it is present in over 100 cities. Co-founded by industry veteran Yogesh Dhingra, the startup counts IFL India Private Equity Fund and Jalaj Dhani Family Office as its key investors. And joining me on the show is Yogesh Dhingra, the founder, MD and CEO of Smarter Logistics. Yogesh, thank you so much for taking the time out and speaking to us. Let me start off by asking you to take us through the beginnings of Smarter Logistics. So what prompted you uh, to start uh, this company? Uh, thank you so much for uh, having me uh, over your uh, channel and uh, discussion. I think, you know, when I was with Blue Dart and we used to meet a lot of customers and the general feeling which we used to get was that market does not have good service quality player. So we good service quality means the high quality player. There is only one and that's cost prohibitive. Hmm. And uh, we then took a call that let's come up with a product which is very superior in terms of service quality and at the same time is not cost prohibitive so that more and more people, more and more customers can use it. I think that is the prime uh, motive and in order to do that, you see, if you have to give a high quality product and it has to be not cost prohibitive means value for money kind of a product, you need to be very innovative. You need to come up with an asset light model, mm. cost structure, more of variable cost so that you are not burdened with the huge fixed cost, which then, you know, you, you can offer the benefits to the end customer. That's what we did. And I think I'll be very happy to tell you that customers really appreciated that. Within a span of two years, we have become one of the significant players who is now treated as a quality player. And uh, the kind of growth which we have got is never experienced by any player in the country so far. So in terms of our number, our annual run rate is close to about 180 crores. Very few startups in our space would have done this kind of uh, landmark. Right. So if I can ask you to delve a little bit into all the points that you, some of the points that you mentioned with regard to creating uh, this kind of a company, which is offers superior services, uh, you know, what are exactly the differentiating factors uh, between you and others in your space? You see, in, when we say high service quality, uh, basically it means speed and reliability. So, Speed is measured in terms of transit time. So from pickup point, let's say city A, to destination as city B, how fast are we taking the product of our customers, right? So we have come up with a very unique network where we are the fastest service provider in the country. So, which means one that if you want to send something from, let's say, northern part of the country to southern part, nobody can match our transit time. So that's speed. And then comes the reliability that if I'm telling you that I'll deliver next day, what is the percentage of make honoring that promise? So that's called reliability. Yes. And how many times, you know, I'm achieving that promise. So we have close to about 97, 98% where our 
promises, our commitments are being met. So that is how, uh, you know, we are differentiating ourselves with other players in terms of speed, reliability, and as a customer, if one has to look at it, if I pick up a particular box or uh, any kind of a shipment and deliver in the same form and appearance, which means no damage, no scratch, nothing, that is what is called uh, good service quality. Right. Uh, so what are the processes uh, that you have put into place uh, to ensure this uh, kind of supply chain, to ensure that the speed is faster than others, uh, than other players, cost more cost efficient, uh, if you can take us through? You see, uh, in order to put that, you need to have a very smart network. Hmm. So, you know, today India has almost like fleet size of about 450 kind of aircrafts. Now there are multiple airports, right? Now you need to decide that from that airport to the destination airport, which particular aircraft, which airline suits you well. So you need to use an airline which really helps you to reach there faster. You know, when you as a passenger travel, especially when you go overseas, you see, okay, if you have to change your flight, which is the less time, you know, how fast you can reach your destination. And that is what we did. We came up with a very, very innovative uh, network, which helped us to reach from origin to destination in a faster manner. Now, if you have a network, you need to monitor and then technology comes in. How to ensure that people across the country are adhering to that network. To follow that, technology is there. But apart from the technology, you need quality people. You need to train them so that they can really do a seamless uh, first time right kind of uh, you know performance. In our business, if you are if you miss any kind of uh, point, you, it's difficult to recover in these subsequent, uh, you know, uh, layers. So one need to ensure that each and every point in the chain is seamless and error-free. Okay. Uh, in terms of uh, the scale of the company currently, if you can give us some idea, you said that you've been the fastest, one of the fastest growing startups uh, uh, in recent times. Uh, so what would be the scale right now and then what would be the kind of expansion plans uh, that you are looking at? You see, in a span of two years, we are there in 115 cities. We cover close to about 2,500 pin codes. And um, so we have both air as well as uh, road network. And we are looking at um, in the next... Uh, three to four years touching close to about 10,000 uh, pin codes and thereafter, you know, another 4,000 or so. So we plan to cover 14,000 pin codes in the next five to six years. That should be good enough for us, you know, though country has almost close to 30,000, but we believe that in case if you need to be profitable, uh, you know, keeping inbound and outbound traffic for each city or each pin code, I think 14,000 is the good number. Okay. Uh, can you give us a sense of, uh, you know, your financials at this point in time? What are the kind of margins that you're working with, especially given the fact that you said this is more cost efficient uh, from a customer point of view compared to other uh, such logistic companies? So what happens is, you know, you look at in our space uh, we are in network business yeah so you are into multiple cities and within city you have multiple offices and delivery or hubs it takes time to come to a stage of break even or making you know the margins mm -hmm. uh, there are players in this our space you know they have taken eight years or ten years to reach to a profitable level uh, the way we are progressing, I think we should be profitable in the third year itself. And uh, we are looking at 
from the fourth year onwards, making a, a gross margin of about 14, 15%. Uh, and in terms of uh, fundraising, uh, you know, to fund the expansion plans that you have, uh, what does that look like? Well, you know, we are working towards, you know, doing a working capital funding. We are looking at doing some kind of uh, a right issue as of now. Mm -hmm. So once we are successful thereafter, after two years or so, then we will look at I know another round for a uh, expansion. So we believe that we can continue uh, whatever plans we have with our existing resources and with the existing investors. Okay. Uh, what would you say are uh, some of the biggest challenges that you face uh, in running this entire operation? And at the same time, obviously, as it grows bigger, as you expand further, what are some of the challenges that you would anticipate? I think challenges today is basically uh, attracting talent, mm -hmm. uh, retaining talent. You know, our business is labor intensive. You know, today in a just span of two years, we have close to 2,200 employees. And the way we are progressing, you know, you know we will be 15,000 kind of, uh, in, you know, FTEs in our organization that is the big thing you know today there are so many opportunities for the front level staff in the market so you need to be innovative to how to retain them you know and how to attract so that's the biggest challenge which we are facing uh, today or let's say industry is facing today otherwise i think in of technology in terms of senior level leadership positions uh, innovation no problem it's only right. hardcore uh, you know the frontline staff is is an issue right right so logistics of course is one uh, one of the sectors which could benefit a lot uh, you know from ai from technology the way it's developing today uh, how do you see that integration coming in as part of your entire uh, business model? Yeah, yeah. I think in technology, every day you have to look at something new, something different. I think with such good technology tools which we have, we are able to resolve the customer's issues within a span of just four hours. Yeah. I think we have 24 by 7 uh, customer care, and there are so much of analytics available within the organization to address proactively a lot of issues which we know are likely to come. So that way, I think, you know, like there is a saying that for quality, there is no end to excellence. Mm -hmm. Similarly, for use of technology, there is no end. Right. Uh, in terms of uh, the breakup of your business, whether it is uh, to B two C or B two B, what what kind of a range are you seeing, and where do you see the maximum uh, business coming in from at the moment? You see, as of now, we are close to about uh, fifty five percent is B two C and D two C, and forty five percent is B two B. But the way we are growing now and getting deeper into B2B, over the long term, we believe that B2B will be about 60% and B2C and D2C will be about 40 So we are the you know, very unique uh, player in the country offering both B2B and e-commerce services from day one of our start. Absolutely, uh, Yogesh. In fact, uh, on that note, uh, thank you so much for joining us on the show and for giving us all of that perspective and wishing you all the very best. Thank you. We really need uh, wishes so that we can really fulfill the demands of our customers and fill that vacuum which was there in the market of good service uh, quality players.